Welcome back folks, video number 15. Who thought I'd have made it this far, eh? Uh, that's, so far that's five hours of video I've uploaded. Um, I dread to think how much I've actually cut out and how many takes I've done of, of various different bits. Um, but it's going all right, and thanks uh, for keeping watching. Um, had loads of good feedback, had lots of emails lately and stuff as well, which is much appreciated. I I'm glad that they're of some use to people, all right? Uh, a couple of days ago, we did Escaping the System Part 1, okay? Uh, today is going to be Escaping the System Part 2, all right? Uh, this time, we're going to look at how to do that with out-of-reach anchors. So we've used the rope, we've built our belay, and we've put the clovitches back onto ourselves. Now, I'm obviously, I'm on Sling Mountain, and these aren't truly out of reach, so we're just going to have to play the game a little bit, all right? I'm not going to do any fancy, going to make a cup of coffee again or anything like that. So give me a second to set myself up on the rope and that, and you'll join me ready to rescue my mate who's dangling down there having fallen off for whatever reason. Okay, so I've set up my belay, uh, out of reach anchors, uh, standard setup on belay through the rope loop, all that kind of stuff. We're going to have to remember that these are out of reach, okay, so just play the game a little bit. I know they are in reach, but we're on Sling Mountain, it's the best I can do. Imagine we can't reach those anchors, all right? Uh, my mate's fallen off, he needs my help, first aid or whatever it might be. I need to escape the system, get down to help him, all right? So... Hopefully you've watched the first video. If you haven't, I'd recommend doing so because this lot just builds on those bits. And a lot of it is actually identical with just a few extra little steps, okay? So watch that if you haven't. First thing we're gonna do, tie off the belay plate. One, to give me a little breather and to come up with a plan, and two, so I can go hands-free, okay? I've got the back bar of that carabiner facing up. Do that by default, so it makes this bit a bit easier. Um, and I will cut to a close-up of this bit if you haven't seen that before. It'll be on a pink rope, so there's a slight continuity error there, but you'll, you'll, uh, you'll get the picture. I had a good question on YouTube about why this ties off behind the ATC and why the Italian hitch ties off in front of the, um, the hitch. The reason being to do this braking strand, the locked off position is behind the ATC, this side. So we need to maintain that by doing our slippery hitch through the carabiner different on the Italian, I'll explain it when we come to it in a bit. But a slippery hitch, half hitch, and another half hitch. Okay, there we go. I'm now hands free, good. Breathe a sigh of relief, they're still needing my help. I can come up with a plan. I need to bypass this slot and put it onto the anchors so I can be free. The problem with this one though, is I can't reach these just to add a sling in or something. So I'm gonna to have to do something to this slot here. And that's okay, because we can. We're gonna get a sling, 120 centimeter sling ideally, and we're gonna wrap it around all the strands that are up here, okay? Nice and neatly, so there's loads of contact between the sling and the ropes. Loads of friction, that means, doesn't it? And it's gonna be a Clem Heist Prusik. There we go, loads of wraps. Clem Heist should be bottom through top. There we go. Get it. All right, that's properly wedged in there, so that's good. I can get myself a carabiner into that. With the best one in the world, I'm probably going to run out of screw gates in the not too distant future, so I'll have to use a snap gate where it's appropriate, I should imagine. And that's okay, bit of judgment involved. By the time we're getting to learning this stuff, we should hopefully have the judgment to make those decisions of where it's okay to use a snap gate. Sometimes I might need to, you know, have them opposed or whatever, 
but I'm sure we'll work it out as we go. Next step is actually the same as uh, on the last video. We need to put a French Prusik down here. Why a French Prusik? It's releasable under load. This Prusik has to be releasable under load. You'll be able to release any old Prusik um, when you're doing it on the banisters or whatever. But when you're actually doing it with a real person dangling off a cliff, it needs to be the French Prusik. It'll still be quite hard. You have to put a bit of effort into releasing it, but um, it will need to be the French Prusik for that to happen. Just gonna do that the other way around because that join. These these prosics are really good. I like these sewn ones. They're rated, same as a sling, just a 22 to 22 kilonewtons. But I do find they can be a bit of a pain because that joy will make it work though. Snap gate, because I think I'm just gonna have to here. Is it locking up? Uh it is, but I would like an extra wrap in there. I think it will need it different compared to when it's under weight and stuff so you just have to have a bit of a, a test every time you do it probably put an extra couple of wraps in there to be honest but that's really locking now so i'm happy with that try to let go of it because it might just disappear on down the crag gonna get yourself another sling this one uh i by default it's probably going to be a 120 centimeter sling because you never quite know how much uh length you need there but if you measure it out I've got kind of more than enough there. So I might, I'm gonna see if I can double it up because that'll make things nice and clear. You might just have to shorten it with an overhand or whatever, but I'll try this way just to make things clear. I think that's gonna be, yeah, look at that, that's bang on. We're, we're happy with that. Do them up. Okay, so that is my little bypass, isn't it? Pretty happy, everything's locking. Good. Clem Heist, Bypass, French Prusik. They're still on my belay as well, the original setup, so we're, all, we're like super safe at the moment. I'm trying to think a step ahead though. When I release this and take that off, I don't want to be on just Prusiks, don't like that. So I'm gonna preempt getting a backup in there, right? Now, where can I put a backup to? I can't reach those anchors in this case, remember? So my only strong point it's going to be here because this lot is going to disappear to some extent in a minute. I'm going to escape the system, aren't I? So this is as good as it gets, right? So I'm going to put a carabiner in there, clip it and flip it to get it the right way around. Easier to clip and it's gravity loaded. Get him in. Spin him shut. Okay. I'll, I'll get it snugged up, but there's no point doing it too much yet because I'm going to have loads of slack in the system in a minute. So bypass and a Prusik uh, set up. An Italian hitch backing up the ATC because that's disappearing in a second, all right? Okay, happy with that so far, hopefully. If this slips, right, it's going to be scary, but it's not the end of the world because it'll only slip as far as these knots and then it'll stop itself, okay? So, okay, that's not the best strong point in the world, but it's the best we've got, and this is, we're improvising a little bit here, we've just got to make it work, okay? So it, it will have to do for us. Next step then, this is all lock-in, I'm all happy, I can release the belay tie-off, okay? So I get rid of my first half hitch, get rid of my second half hitch, really concentrating, absolutely keeping hold of the dead rope at all times, grab the whole device, grip it properly tight, ping that through, good. I can now pull a bit of uh, that through there, not all of it yet, just to get it there. Now I'm going to keep hold of this one because it's going to be my Italian hitch doing all the work in a moment. I can release that and I can check this Prusik is locking and everything with a load of weight on. It'll be better. Uh, so that's locking up there. That's good. I can now take off the ATC whilst covering that breaking strand. You can hear the dog's board. He's yawning away. Um, ping that out. Great. We're winning. Tighten up my Italian hitch. Okay. I want to go hands free, so I'm going to lock it off. Breaking position of maximum friction for an Italian hitch is ropes parallel, okay? So that's where we're going to tie it off. That's why we do the tie off in front of it instead of behind it like we did with the ATC. Again, I'll cut through to the zoomed in one from the last video with the pink rope for that. But Italian hitch, tie off, slippery hitch, half hitch around, both the strands of rope, one more. There we go, get it nice and neat.
right, I can stop leaning on that now because that's doing its thing. I have successfully, did I say that right? I have successfully got my belay out of the system. I'm still tied into the system and get that round the back and tidy it out of the way. Prusik to Clem Heist, backed up with an Italian hitch, all on this PowerPoint here. This has become our PowerPoint, right? Oh, good. Another sigh of relief, we are making progress. Next stage is I need to come out of this slot. If I'm gonna untie this slot, what am I attached to? Well, nothing, so let's get myself a sling on. An improvised lanyard, isn't it? Uh, 120 centimeter one again, gives us that bit of flexibility. Lark's foot it in. Tie myself a knot in it, because I will need to adjust it, so I just preempt that by doing an overhand. Get myself a screw gate, because this has to be a screw gate, this one, because it's a single point of attachment. What can I clip to? It's gonna to have to be that again, isn't it? There is nothing else useful to clip to, so get myself in there. Okay, winning. They're still good on their prosics and on there. I could actually win that back now, couldn't I? I could take it off, because this is doing all the work, but I'm not going to, you'll see why in a moment. Leave that in on this one. Okay, so I'm safe. I can now untie my original tie-in point. Pretty weird doing that halfway up a cliff, isn't it? So just make sure you've checked and double checked everything is all good. Get rid of him, there's no weight on this so I can untie it. If it's weighted, wouldn't be able to untie it. There we go, we're out. Okay, great, we're making some progress. Uh, what's next then? All right, okay. I'm gonna have to do some little bit of adjustment there. You'll see why in a second. I want that not to be about matched up with those things there. Uh, and I'm going to retie this figure of eight through the carabiner, so through the original HMS. Thread it all, just being really thorough and careful because, you know, there's a lot of things going on here, so take it steady, be sure with what you're doing. Okay, great. There you go. That is my new PowerPoint. Happy with that. What can I do with that PowerPoint? Well, loads. Firstly, I want to get rid of this slot, okay? I can't just start sliding prosics and hoofing it because it's all under tension, isn't it? So, another Italian hitch. Now, I'm running out of carabiners here, so temporarily, I'm gonna to have to um, just get my belay plate clipped to something else out of the way, it's just a snap gate to keep hold of it for a moment. I want to transfer this Italian hitch onto a proper strong point. Yeah, this has been a temporary power point. This is better, isn't it? Because this isn't reliant on just on some friction. So I get my carabiner in there. I'm gonna do myself an Italian. Get him in, do him up. Okay, now this is why that prusik is still there. Because otherwise, how would I unweight that and put it onto there? Well, I couldn't without putting the prusik back on. So we've been a little bit more efficient by leaving that prusik in. These are the little things that uh, you'll discover through practice, all right? I can now release my Italian hitch. Just being careful with it, because I still want to make sure all these prosics are locking and everything. Okay, great, prosic is locking. Yep, doing its thing. I can just unclip that now. It's looking quite complicated at the moment, this, isn't it? However, it's gonna clear up real soon, which is ace. Tighten up that Italian hitch. Get him all snug through there. A few twists and things. We'll work, work it out though. Right, great, so I can now tie off this Italian hitch. We know how to tie off an Italian hitch because we've done it a few times now. We take a little loop through there, slippery hitch, good stuff, good stuff. Two half hitches. There's one, there's two, okay. What can we do next? That's what I'm always thinking, I'm trying to think that one step ahead, all right? Slippery and two half hitches. What can I do now? Oh, actually, I can start to win this lot back, uh, but I've got to stay safe as well, haven't I? That's important. Have I got a screw gate? No, I haven't at the moment. So what I could be able to do possibly is lift that into there, but I can't. I have got that spare screw, there we go, winning. That's why it's important to tidy up as you go because you're winning the bits back that make your life easier. So I get that into my sling. That's gonna go into the new PowerPoint. Great, can get rid of the stuff off this orange sling, the gold sling. Oh, brilliant, right. Now, what is this lot doing? Now, 
it's bypassing this lot. I don't need it to anymore. I can't release this one because it's under load and it's a Clem Heist. I can release this one because we did the French Prussic. Brilliant. You'll have to pull quite hard. So you just grab it, oh, pull hard, pull hard, pull hard. Eventually it'll slip a bit and all this will take the strain. Ah, oh, great. That's loose. I can get that off. Win it back and get it stored away. Just chuck it over your head. Best thing to do with a Prusik temporarily. Uh, sling, let's tidy all this lot up as well. May as well. Okay, get that over your head, nice and smooth. Get rid of that one. The clam heist, because that's not doing anything useful anymore. It's done a good job for a while though. Remember, that was really neat and tidy, so loads of friction. Look, there's no like weird crossing over and stuff like that. Hey, Ace, that's really good. Um, I'm saying it's really good because it's worked and it's perfect and I haven't rehearsed it, so I'm always happy when it, it happens like that. Uh, so, I'm still safe. They're still safe on their tied-off Italian hitch onto the original belay. Remember, that will be really tight, not a bit saggy like this one is. And now I can do something useful with it. What useful thing can I do with it? I'm not going to go fully into that now, but I'll put a new screw gate into this power point. I could have sail down here, but what I like to do is just isolate that knot. So like one knot, one job. So I'm just going to do a little isolation loop there and put myself a clove hitch into there. Excellent. Oh, I could now have sail on that. So we'll go into that in another video. It should be part, part three to this lot. But cool, we've escaped the system. Crikey, there's quite a lot to that, isn't there? What I'll do when I'm editing the video is I'll try and zoom in onto a few bits to try and make it as clear as possible. I hope this blue rope is as clear as the pink rope. Just fancied mixing it up for like part two. Uh, if anyone's interested, these are Beal Jokers. They're really nice ropes, 9.1. Uh, triple rated, so they're single, they're halves and they're twins. Really nice to use. Well, our questions on that lot then uh, that I can sort of preempt. Same George who asked a question about that lot, asked the question about what to do if you're going around a big boulder somewhere in the Peak District. So when you top out on a route there, you might literally just loop your rope around the boulder and clove it back to you. So you end up with something very similar to this. So the answer is, you do exactly the same. You put that big clem heist around the whole lot and you do the process we've just done, winning. Sometimes on that boulder, or just having set up your, your anchors as normal, you've got a fairly wide angle. If you've got those wide angles, then when you put that clem heist on to bring it all together, it gets pulled apart and it doesn't lock properly. So what you have to do then is only one more step. You put a clem heist on one part and a clem heist on the other part. So you end up with two slings or two sets of prussics and you bring them together. There you go, it's that simple. So it's only one more step, prussic slings around each side, okay? Needs a lot of practice, this one. Um, so for the mountaineering and climbing instructor qualification, which is what I've got and what I use, uh, it, it's a big part of, of that assessment. So, um, you know, trainees get very stressed about it and they practice this loads and loads and loads. And you have to, you do have to practice it a lot. Practice on your banisters or outside or whatever, just with it tied around a chair and stuff like that. When we can get to the crags again, go and practice it on the crags. Practice it with a heavy rucksack, that's nice because there's no sort of worry of dropping someone or anything like that. Keep yourself safe all the time though, that's like flipping important, look after yourself. And then once you've kind of got it dialed, okay, yeah, great, put your mate on it, dangle them off the edge. But maybe think about putting them on a backup so if you do mess it up at all, you know, it doesn't matter because they're on a separate line. So I think backup's a really good idea for that, all right. There was a lot of steps to that one. Yeah, it's probably one of the most complicated things you'll ever have to do. And the trouble is, you'll, you'll sort of learn it, and then you'll never do it, really, hopefully. Fingers crossed and touch wood and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I've never had to do, like, a full escape in the system on out-of-reach anchors. I have had to do stuff on uh, sort of in-reach anchors. Nothing very dramatic, but, you know, sometimes it's, uh, you just have to for sort of little reasons. But I do know people have had to do this for real. So, you know, it is a skill that I think every climber should be able to do and because you're not doing it regularly hopefully if you're doing it regularly then pff, things are going wrong in your climbing career um, but do practice it you know just get out and you, you've got a spare hour or two in a year's time in two years and five years just practice it every now and then so it's all fresh so when you do need it you've got it and you're going to get it dialed and think about just taking it slow and steady Try and work through each step in a progressive manner. 
What we want to see is people working towards the end goal, slow and steady and smooth, okay? Not going over here, realizing they've done it wrong, coming back, going over there, doing it back. And you know, that's going to take you longer actually if you rush it, isn't it? So just keep thinking a step ahead the whole time, stay nice and calm with it, and it will all be good, I'm sure. So yeah, go out and practice it, pause the video, rewind the video, you know, all that kind of stuff. Do far away with any questions on this one, right? Uh, I'm absolutely happy to answer as best as I can. So please, please do fire away with anything. Um, some people have been sharing pictures on Instagram and that of them trying out these things. Yeah, great, keep doing that and tag us, JB Mountain Skills, that's always ace. If you don't follow us, follow us on Insta. Why not? Go and follow us now. Uh, same on Facebook, follow us now. Uh, JB Mountain Skills, it's all much appreciated. Obviously, I'm doing these videos for free. Uh, so if you if you have got a few seconds to click the follow button, the like button, the subscribe button, all that, it's, it's really beneficial to me. So thanks very much in advance for that. Um, I'll keep making these videos. Uh, because people are watching so far, and like I say, it gives me something to do. Any requests, fire away. Thanks very much for watching. More videos coming along very soon.